Hi everyone, welcome to episode 8. So today we're going to be working a little bit more on our moving platforms. Uh, essentially what we want to do is to be able to add in a bunch of waypoints and have the platform move between those waypoints rather than using this move vector. So let's go into the script. I'm going to start off by creating a public array of vector threes called my local waypoints. And uh, so these will basically just be a bunch of positions relative to the platform that make up our waypoints. It would be really nice to be able to visualize these waypoints as we're adding them in the inspector. So let's create a onDrawGizmos function to do this. So void onDrawGizmos. And we only want to draw the gizmos if local waypoints is not equal to null. And let's start off by setting the color of our gizmos. Um, Gizmos.color, pick a color, I'll choose red. And let's also create a float to uh, set the size that we want to draw our gizmos at so we can easily modify that. Um, so to say float size, I'll set that equal to 0.3. And then we want to go through each of the waypoints. So we'll do a little for loop for int i equals 0, i less than uh, local waypoints.length. Um, I++. Plus plus. Now uh, we need to convert the local position into a global position in order to draw our gizmo. So let's say vector3 global waypoint position is equal to um, the local waypoint i plus our platform's position, so transform.position. All right, so now we want to draw our gizmo centered at global waypoint position. Now, I think it would be nice to draw a little cross. So let's uh, draw two lines. First, let's start by drawing the uh, vertical line. So we'll go from global waypoint position minus vector three dot up multiplied by size to global waypoint position plus vector three dot up multiplied by size. All right, and I'll just uh, copy that for the horizontal line and just replace vector3 dot up with vector three dot left. All right, so now, in theory, if we were to go to our local waypoints and set the size, say to two, okay, you can see we've got a little gizmo cross being drawn. And uh, if I move the second waypoint up on the y-axis, you can see uh, it's being nicely visualized. And since these are our local waypoints, if we were now to move the starting position of the platform around, the, uh, the waypoints move with it. But uh, one problem with this, of course, is that if we were to now actually uh, play, um, at the moment, of course, this is just moving with the move vector, but say it's moving between the waypoints, um, since the waypoints are moving with it, it's never going to actually reach the waypoints, so it's a bit useless. So we are going to create a, another array of vector threes called our global waypoints. And in the start method, we'll say global waypoints is equal to a new array of vector threes with a length of local waypoints dot length. And we'll go through each of these in a for loop for int i equals zero, i less than local waypoints dot length, i plus plus. We want to set uh, we want to set global waypoints i equal to local waypoints i plus our position at the start of the game. All right, so these are the waypoints that we'll be using to actually move between, and it would be nice to use these global waypoints uh, for the gizmos when the game is running, um, so that while the game isn't running, we can move these around and the gizmos will move with it. But when the game is running, we'd like these to stay still so we can see actually how it's moving between them. So the way we'll do this is uh, when we're setting the global waypoint position, we'll first check if application dot is playing. All right, so if it's playing, then we want to use our global waypoint position. So we'll say question mark, which means the statement is true. And we'll follow it with global waypoints i. 
and then if it's false, which we indicate with a colon, we'll set it equal to this. So now, as you can see, we can still move this around, but if we press play, they stay in place. Cool. So now we actually have to get it so that it's really moving between the waypoints. So let's go back into the script and go right to the top and let's delete this move vector three that we have. And instead, I'm going to create a method which returns a vector three. Which I'm going to call something along the lines of calculate uh, platform movement. And what we'll do is instead of setting velocity equal to move multiplied by time dot delta time, is we'll set it equal to the result of this calculate platform movement method. All right, so in here, we're going to want to know which waypoint we're moving away from and which waypoint we're moving towards and the percentage that we've moved between the two. So let us start off by creating a public float just to store the speed of our platform then an integer for our from waypoint index. So this is the index of the global waypoint that we're moving away from. And then we also want a float for the percent that we've moved between the two waypoints. And just to be clear, this is a percentage between zero and one, not uh, zero and a hundred. All right, so inside the calculate platform movement method, let's start by creating an integer to waypoint index, which is simply equal to from waypoint index plus one, since it's the next one in the array. Then we're going to want to know the distance between the two waypoints. So float distance between waypoints is equal to, and we can use the nice vector three dot distance method. Now we just need to pass in our two global waypoints. So uh, global waypoints at from waypoint index to global waypoints to waypoint index. That will give us the distance between the two. And now we want to increase our percentage each frame. So percent between waypoints plus equals time dot delta time multiplied by speed. Now, of course, this is increasing at a constant rate. So if the, uh, if the waypoints are further apart, the percentage between them is still increasing at the same speed. And so you'll move much faster between waypoints that are further away. So that's why we calculated the distance and we'll divide the speed by the distance so that our percentage increases more slowly the further away waypoints are. All right, so now let's create a vector three to store our new position. And for our new position, we're just going to do a vector three dot lerp to find the point between our from waypoint and our to waypoint based on our percentage. So we pass in global waypoints from waypoint index, global waypoints to waypoint index, and finally our percentage. All right, so at the end, what we'll do is we'll return our new position minus our current position in order to give the amount that we want to move this frame. All right, but before we return, we first need to consider what happens when percent between waypoints is greater than or equal to one. In other words, we've reached the next waypoint. Well, of course, the first thing we want to do is we want to reset the percentage. So it starts again at zero. And then we want to increment our from waypoint index by one. So we can just say from waypoint index plus plus so that we move to the next set of waypoints. But then we want to check that uh, when we get our, over here, when we get our two waypoint index, which is, remember, from waypoint index plus one, we want to make sure that that's not going to be outside of the array. So we'll say if from waypoint index is greater than or equal to the global waypoints dot length minus one, once again, since this is plus one, then we know we've reached the end of our array. So we're going to, first of all, set the from waypoint index equal to zero so that it starts again at the beginning. But we really want to move backwards through our waypoints now um, so that we sort of retrace our steps. So the simplest way to do this will be simply to reverse our array of waypoints. So we can do this by calling system.array.reverse. Oops, not resize, reverse. 
and passing in our global waypoints array. All right, so if we save and go back into Unity, let's select the moving platform and just give it a speed of something other than zero. I'll set it to two. Let's press play. And it's moving nicely between its two little waypoints. So I'm gonna give it a third waypoint and just move that a little bit along the x-axis, run it again, and it's still working nicely. Cool, so there are three more things that I'd like to do. First of all, I'd like to be able to specify whether or not the platform's movement is cyclic. And what I mean by that is if it's cyclic, once it moves along and reaches the last waypoint, instead of now retracing its steps back like it's doing at the moment, it will go to the first waypoint and continue like that. Um, also, I'd like to be able to specify some sort of little wait time um, so that it, once it reaches a waypoint, it sort of pauses for however many seconds before carrying on to the next one. And finally, I'd like to make some smoothing or rather easing so that between each waypoint, it sort of accelerates, reaches its maximum speed, and then decelerates as it approaches the next waypoint. So let's look at all of that, um, starting with the cyclic thing. So this whole cyclic thing should be easy enough. We just need to create a um, public bool to specify whether or not we want it to be cyclic. And uh, over here, where we reverse the whole array and set the from waypoint index equal to zero, we only want to do this if not cyclic. Let's encapsulate that all in the if statement. And now, uh, of course, we need to be wary that we're not resetting the from waypoint index to zero if it is cyclic, which means that this is going to go out of bounds. Um, so what we'll do at the beginning is we'll say from waypoint index percent equals global waypoints dot length. So that just makes it reset to zero each time it reaches global waypoints dot length. And uh, we want to do the same thing for from waypoint index plus one. We want to say percent um, global waypoints dot length. All right, so let's play. First of all, without cyclic turned on, let's make sure that this is still working. Seems to be fine. So let's now turn cyclic on and run it again. Cool, that's working. So next up, let us add in a wait time. Um, so just a public float wait time. And uh, we'll want to store a float here, next move time. And uh, in the calculate platform movement, right at the beginning, we'll say if time dot time is less than the next move time, then we're just going to return vector three dot zero. So we mustn't move at all. And each time that we reach a new waypoint, we can finish off by saying next move time is equal to the current time plus the amount of time that we must wait. So that should be working. Let's try it out. Uh, give it a wait time of maybe, well, one second, two seconds is very long. So it should move up, wait one second, move along, wait one second, and so on. Okay, cool. I'm going to set that back to zero now that we've seen that it's working. And uh, let us move on to the easing. So I'd like to draw your attention to this wonderful little equation, y equals x to the a over x to the a plus one minus x to the a. And the reason it's so wonderful is given a value of x between zero and one, essentially our percentage, it will give us back a y value also from zero to one but it will be eased depending on our value for a. Now, uh, if we set a equal to one, this is going to give us a straight line, essentially no easing at all. It will be exactly the same as we have it at the moment. But if we increase the value for a, uh, let me put it up to two, for example, you can see that now some easing is occurring and the higher the value for a is, the more easing we'll have. So if I set a to something dramatic like 20, 
uh, you can see we get this very intense ease curve, which is not really of much use to anyone because it's essentially pausing um, at the two ends and then moving really fast in the middle. And we could just use our wait time for that, obviously. So generally, I found that a value for A between 1 and about 3, a little bit less than 3, gives pretty nice results. So we'll sort of be experimenting within that range. All right, let's go ahead and actually implement this easing. So I'm going to create a method called ease, which returns a float. This will take in a float x, and we can define the variable a of the equation, just set it equal to 1 for now. And so we want to return the result of our equation. So it started x to the power a. So we'll use mathf.pow x comma a, uh, a. And all of that was divided by a bunch of stuff. So let's just open some brackets. Um, it started with x to the a again. So mathf.pow x comma a plus 1 minus x to the a. So once again, mathf.pow 1 minus x to the power a. All right. Now we'd want to be able to uh, change the value of a from the inspector. So let's create a public float. Um, let's call it ease amount. Now, just intuitively, when ease amount is equal to zero, we'd expect there to be no easing. But as I showed in the equation, when a is equal to one, that's when we're actually getting no easing. So what we'll do is we'll set a equal to the ease amount plus one, so that obviously when it's equal to zero, our a value will be equal to one. And uh, let's clamp this uh, variable by just saying range. We can clamp it between, say, zero and two. So our actual a value will be clamped between one and three. As I mentioned, above three, you're not really getting very usable results. So yeah, that's why we'll do that. And uh, then over here, we've got our percent between waypoints being increased. Um, we want to make sure that we're actually clamping this um, between 0 and 1. So we can just say mathf.clamp01 and pass in the percentage, uh, just because if it's outside of 0 or 1, um, we might get strange results from our ease function. And then we can create a float eased percent between waypoints is equal to ease and pass in the percent between the waypoints. So now for our new position, we'll use the eased percentage instead of the normal percentage. Okay, so let's save and try that out. I'll start off uh, with the ease amount at zero, which means we should see no easing, which is the case. And let me increase it a bit. And you can see we've got easing. Pretty cool. I think I like it best at about a value of pretty much exactly 1, which of course is a equals 2. Yeah, it seems about optimal. And let's put a little bit of wait time, maybe 0.5 of a second. And let's see if we can actually hop on board of this without any problems. Yeah, so it all seems to be working pretty nicely. Okay, so that brings episode 8 to a close. Uh, let me know what you'd like to see in future episodes. I haven't actually got anything planned for episode 9 yet. I'm thinking maybe wall jumping. Um, but also, if you have any requests for future series or any questions, um, just leave that in the comments and I'll get back to you. Cheers!